my dear friends holy week is the most important week for us christians in our liturgical calendar and the easter triduum that is monday thursday good friday and easter sunday are the days when we commemorate the most profound and solemn mysteries not only in the life of jesus but in our christian faith and spirituality these are the days we commemorate the passion death and resurrection of our lord jesus christ which are the basis for our salvific works of redemption and the easter triduum begins with monday thursday monday thursday has got four components so to say the four commemorative events that took place at the last supper of jesus the first of them is the washing of the feet john does not have the narrative of the last supper that the synoptics have but he has the mention of the washing of his apostles feet that is in the day's gospel chapter 13 verse 1 to 15 again in the synoptics particularly in luke's gospel there is a mention that at the last supper the apostles were fighting and arguing among themselves as to who is the greatest among them perhaps hearing that in john's gospel jesus gets up from the table says nothing not a word to his apostles and begins washing the feet of his disciples now this was a very significant act the apostles must have been dumbfounded that was the work not only of a servant but of a slave and jesus gives an example there of what it means to be great in the kingdom he wanted to impress upon his apostles that the leadership in the church in the kingdom will be the servant leadership and he gave the initiative he gave the start to it by washing the feet of his apostles and he told them you know you call me lord and i am your lord you call me master and i am your master you are my disciples you are my servants and yet i have washed your feet now this you do to one another it must have had a profound impact on the apostles at the last supper we know from the gospel account that once his own apostles james and john came to jesus and asked him to make them sit one on his right and one on his left and that time jesus said this is not in my hand it is the father who allots places in the kingdom but remember is the people in this world with power and authority they lord it over the people and oppress them but let it not be so among you the one who wants to be the greatest must be the smallest and the humblest jesus got that spirit of servant leadership from the time he came into this world paul writing to the philippians chapter 2 6 to 11 he says that very clearly that jesus knew that he shared his divinity with the father but when he opted to be the messiah to be incarnated into this world he let go his divinity he emptied himself and became a man took the form of a man and lived as a servant obedient even unto the death on the cross that's what prompted him from the beginning to live a life of a servant of his father of god 
And Jesus wants his apostles, when he commissions them, go and spread the good news all around. He wants them to practice that servant leadership. The second event that we commemorate is the institution of the Eucharist by Jesus. Jesus was having the Last Supper with his apostles in the upper room in Jerusalem. That was the traditional Passover meal, but Jesus transforms that Passover meal into the Eucharist, the first Eucharist celebrated in the world with Jesus and his apostles around him. He told his apostles after taking bread, he broke it, blessed it, and gave it to his apostles and said, take and eat, this is my body, broken for you. And after the supper, he took the chalice of wine and told his apostles, take and drink, this is my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. Now this simply changed the view, the significance of the Old Testament sacrifices and holocausts and the Passover meal into the Eucharist that Jesus instituted at the Last Supper. Now he is the priest, he is the victim, but the significant part is that when Jesus says, this is my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. And when we think of the Eucharist, Jesus had already told them that those, who want, those of you who want to be the greatest in the kingdom, you must humble yourself and become small. Empty yourself of your ego, of your self, of your self-interest, vested interest. And think of the others, become selfish, don't be selfish, avoid selfishness, avoid self-centeredness and think of the interests and happiness of others. That is the meaning of the Eucharist that Jesus gave to his apostles. Now this is a challenge for us. Jesus washed the feet of his apostles at the Last Supper. Besides giving them a value into servant leadership, Jesus wanted to purify them. He told them, you are clean, but not all of you. You need cleaning, you need purification. And that was a symbolic act of purifying them before they took part in that Eucharistic meal with Jesus. It's a challenge for us on this Monday Thursday that whenever we take part in the Eucharist, we come in a worthy manner to celebrate the Eucharist. Paul, in today's second reading, writing to the Corinthians, says, in fact, he warns, be careful, Corinthians. When you take part in the Eucharist, you should be worthy. Do not take the body and blood of Christ in an unworthy manner. And the third element the third component that we celebrate is the institution of the priesthood. Jesus gives a new meaning and new significance to the priesthood in the New Testament compared to the Old Testament priesthood. When he blessed the bread and the wine and gave them to eat and drink, he said at the end, do this in memory of me. By saying that, Jesus anointed them and appointed them to continue offering this Eucharistic sacrifice in his memory. Now that very act was an act of ordaining the apostles to the priesthood to continue the New Testament Eucharist, a covenant of everlasting life forgiveness of sins for many in this world. That authority, that power is given to the apostles to continue doing that. Today is the day we remember our priests. 
there are not only hundreds but thousands of good priests in this world. Today is the day to thank the Lord for giving us good priests, committed priests, dedicated priests, holy priests. But if our experience is bad with some of the priests, then today is the day to pray for our priests. Lord, forgive them. Lord, help them to be strong and committed and dedicated in their faith. We got to stand by our priests. Remember, priests also are weak and vulnerable. Jesus said at the Last Supper, You did not choose me. I chose you. And I am sending you into this world so that you bear fruit for the kingdom. And the fourth aspect we remember today is the new commandment the Lord has given us. At the Last Supper, he told his apostles in John 13, 34, and also it comes in John 15 and 12. I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. We have to love one another as Jesus has loved us. It's a sacrificial love. It's a humble love. It is selfless love. It is a generous love. And above all, it is a forgiving love. The Lord is asking us, by giving us the new commandment, that we love not only those who love us, but we love even those who hate us. We love our enemies. We pray for those who persecute us. We bless those who curse us. If we love like Jesus loved us, this Monday Thursday celebration will be so much valuable and significant for us, for a life of faith and spirituality. We ask the Lord today that He give us a heart that we love one another as He has loved us.